right hello good evening guys how are you doing how was your paper yeah we'll start now we'll start okay we'll start with this recall session of anesthesia guys remember the mcqs which are being given over here are basically uh, purely based on the recalls that the students have done okay they might resemble the exact mcq or sometimes they might not resemble it okay but we have tried to frame in in that manner starting with the first mcq guys hello right so which of the following drug causes adrenal suppression basically he's talking about the iv induction agent there is only iv induction agent that can cause adrenal suppression only one iv induction agent again in the rr session also we have discussed about that drug what is that drug guys etomidate etomidate remember it's the most cardio stable iv induction agent but when you give etomidate on a long term infusion i've just cut paste the slide from the rr guys when you give etomidate as a long term infusion it will cause adrenal suppression right adrenal suppression so which of the following drug causes adrenal suppression it is etomidate that causes adrenal suppression okay right coming to the second question now guys the second question which is being given over here it might be like this or it might be like i have framed the question in some other sense also okay we'll just discuss it uh, discuss uh, discuss this question in this manner short acting property of thiopentone is due to which of the following okay the options were rapid redistribution rapid elimination highly lipid soluble or re rapid redistribution to the brain basically remember thiopentone is regarded as an ultra short acting barbiturate why it is regarded as an ultra short acting barbiturate guys why because it is having a rapid redistribution okay rapid redistribution now guys the question might be like this which have come or the question might be like this okay which of the following is not true regarding sodium thiopentone right the options are a rapid redistribution of the drug to the adipose tissue remember guys sodium thiopentone when you give it to the patient patient becomes un unconscious in one brain arm circulation time okay so look over here guys patient becomes unconscious within 10 to 12 seconds okay so basically onset is very fast why the onset is very fast why because as we are giving iv sodium thiopentone it reaches the maximum concentration in the brain so basically this is true yani ke it achieves maximum concentration in the brain when when it is given iv hence it is having a fast onset that is true and remember sodium thiopentone is a highly lipid soluble drug okay that is also true and i told you sodium thiopentone <clears throat> is regarded as an ultra short acting barbiturate why it is regarded as an ultra short acting barbiturate why because it is having a rapid redistribution yani ki basically when you give sodium thiopentone to a patient what happens yani ki uh, patient will be unconscious for 10 minutes or patient might be unconscious for 15 minutes after 15 minutes what is happening to the sodium thiopentone the sodium thiopentone goes to kidney or the sodium thiopentone goes to the fat sodium thiopentone doesn't go to the kidney sodium thiopentone gets deposited in the fat and the adipose tissue hence it is an ultra short acting okay it's not having rapid elimination by renal route so basically guys remember which is not true regarding sodium thiopentone it is having rapid elimination by renal route okay so other three things are true so guys you tell me this was asked or, or the first one was asked come on whether the second one came in in your uh, in your exam or the first one both asked okay right again going back to the again going back to the rr 
slide where I told you where I was giving you introduction of sodium thiopentone. I told you it is regarded as an ultra short acting barbitrate. Why it is ultra short acting? Why? Because it's having a rapid redistribution. Okay. Theek hai, theek hai, theek hai, theek. Okay. Right. Theek hai. Next question. Which is the appropriate management of a man who met with a road traffic accident or with an accident sustained fractures of five thoracic ribs? Or the question might be, question might, might come as like, uh, they might have asked like this, patient had fracture of the third to eighth rib. So basically, for this kind of patient who is not responding to any analgesic, what is the next, what is the next step that we need to do? Okay, right. So question in the question, it was asked third to eighth rib. In the question, they asked third to eighth rib. For this patient who is having third to eighth rib fracture, if he is not responding to analgesics, what can we give? First, we'll start with the D option, guys. Can we go for a cervical epidural? Guys, remember cervical epidural means placing a catheter in the cervical epidural space that is basically used for shoulder, any kind of shoulder pain and all. Okay? Basically used for neck as well as upper arm. As well as upper arm. Right? So cervical epidural cannot be the answer over here. Patient is having what? Patient is having fracture from the third to eighth rib. Right? How about a supraclavicular? Block guys. Is supraclavicular block the answer? No. Supraclavicular block is basically a type of brachial plexus block that is usually used for upper arm surgeries or basically upper limb surgery. So it can it cannot be used. Can lumbar epidural be answer? No, sir. Lumbar epidural anesthesia or ep lumbar epidural analgesia is used for below umbilicus long duration surgeries below umbilicus long duration surgeries long duration surgery okay we can also use it for painless labor and all okay now what is what are we left out with the answer was thoracic epidural analgesia right thoracic epidural you have to place a catheter at the uh, at the thora th thoracic vertebrae for pain relief. Remember, thoracic epidural analgesia is not only used for rib fractures. Thoracic epidural is also used for if the patient is posted for CABG and he is having pain of the sternotomy, for that pain relief also you can use thoracic epidural. So thoracic epidural also improves breathing in such patients. Pain will be relieved, guys. Breathing, no, but it may it will improve the ventilation. Okay. Next, Jackson Re circuit is used in which of the following patients? Jackson Re's, guys. Remember Jackson Re's. Jackson Re's is nothing but it is a semi-closed breathing circuit, which is also called as Mapleton circuit. In Mapleson circuit, we are having Mapleson circuit A to F, where else the F circuit is regarded as Jackson Rees. Jackson Rees. What did Jackson Rees do, guys? Jackson Rees, what they did? Basically, remember there was circuit E, which was a bagless and a valveless circuit. Circuit E, which was a bagless and a valveless circuit, right? Which and this circuit E was was called as ISTPs. It was called as ISTPs. It was an incomplete circuit which was made complete by Jackson and Reese, which became circuit F, Mapleson F circuit. Mapleson F circuit is also called as Jackson Reese, which is, which is a circuit of choice for control as well as spontaneous ventilation in pediatric cases. In pediatric cases. Again, going back to our uh, LRR slide. Mapleson F, which is Jackson Reese, it is a circuit of choice for control as well as spontaneous ventilation in pediatrics. Okay, guys. Coming to the next question. 
choose the correct statement for ambu aura 40 now this came as a bouncer kind of thing okay we know ambu aura means basically he is asking about the lma okay we know that there are been questions coming right from the lma topic but again this is a bouncer kind of thing because uh, uh, in my pg time only we have just gone through okay ambu aura lma is there and all it's not that commonly used but again it was asked for that purpose we have to discuss it okay so choose the correct statement about ambu aura 40 is it a first generation second generation third generation guys remember first generation lma devices are those devices which are having only one port that is a ventilatory port for ventilation it does not have a gastric port whereas the second generation lma will have two ports one is the ventilatory port other is the gastric port okay these are the two things these are the two main things of first generation and second generation now coming back to LMA Ambu Aura. Now, guys, remember whenever we are discussing about LMA Ambu, there are two types of Ambu LMA, guys. There are two types of Ambu LMA, mainly two types. Okay. First is LMA Ambu Aura 40, and next is LMA Gain. The second LMA is called as LMA Gain. Now, the question was about Ambu Aura 40. Ambu Aura 40, he did not give any picture about it. Okay? But this LMA is only having one port. Hence, it is the first generation LMA, similar to a classic LMA, which also belongs to first generation. Okay? Whereas second generation LMA, if you zoom into it, second generation is LMA gain. In this LMA gain, you just look over here, guys. One is this ventilatory port. The other is what, guys? The gastric port. So it is having two ports. LMA gain is having two ports. Hence, LMA gain is a second generation, whereas LMA Ambu Aura is a first generation LMA. It's a first generation LMA. Okay. Next, guys. Which is true about pediatric resuscitation? Okay. Which is true about pediatric resuscitation? Now, guys, in the P in this MCQ, just first we'll rule out the wrong options first compression will start with this last option compression to ventilation ratio should be 30 is to 2 when there are two rescuers we'll just see whether we have discussed that we have discussed okay in pediatric life support guys remember if there is a single rescuer the ratio is 30 is to 2 if there is more than one rescuer the ratio is 15 is to 2 okay basically this option is wrong over here right second Adenosine is preferably given intraosseous. Guys, remember, why do you go for adenosine in pediatric res resuscitation? And if at all you are giving adenosine, why we are giving intraosseous? Okay? First of all, adenosine is not used, guys. Adenosine is not used in pediatric life support. Adenosine is commonly used for tachyarrhythmias, guys. Adenosine is used for tachyarrhythmias. Usually for the ventricular tachycardias, we use adenosine, narrow complex, wide complex tachycardias. We have already discussed. Adenosine is used for that. Okay? And if at all you are using adenosine, give it IV. Okay? So adenosine, first of all, is not used in pediatric resuscitation, So it, it couldn't be used. Next, guys. Adrenaline is given in a, given in a dose of 0 0.01 mg per kg body weight. Yes, it is right. And a concentration of one is two thousand no sir adult we are having a concentration of one is two thousand okay for adults whereas for pediatric the concentration is one is to ten thousand one is to ten thousand so basically no 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 guys remember sorry 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 one mistake over here Right. Right, guys. So look over here. Adrenaline is given in a dose of this much. Okay. In adults, we are using in a concentration of one is to 
ten thousand. One is to ten thousand. Okay. Now the uh, the true option in pediatric excitation is what, guys? The depth of chest compression should be one third of the anterior posterior diameter. Just look over here. Whenever you are uh, going for chest compression in pediatrics, either you go for a single hand technique, or if at all it's a neonate or an infant, you go for a uh, you go for a uh, like two finger technique or two thumb technique. But basically, when you are doing chest compressions, how much should be the uh, how much should be the depth of chest compressions? It is very difficult to calculate the exact depth of chest compressions, but it is usually said. 1.5 inches for infants and for other children, two inches chest compression could be done, right? Or it is also said as one third of the anterior posterior diameter. So the true thing about the pediatric recitation is what the depth of chest compression should be one third of the anterior posterior diameter of the chest. Okay. So guys, all in all, how was your paper? Thoracic epidural improves breathing. Yes, thoracic epidural improve, improves ventilation, guys. Pain will be reduced. Patient's tachypnea would be reduced. Great. How did you find anesthesia, guys? How did you find anesthesia? Was it easy or difficult or something? Moderate. Okay. I, I was also expecting some direct questions, but again, questions came, question came from the important topics. That's not uh, the thing, but the questions were framed not properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. So, so these were the questions. Okay. All the best. You have given your, you have given your best. Now just wait for the results and all. All the very best guys. We'll just wind up the session. Okay. Right. Okay guys. Thank you.